this is Mari Lane from the Buying Space Channel. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. I'm in Revelation. Uh, last time I read chapter 1. And um, St. John uh, the Baptist is, um, excuse me, not St. John the Baptist. It's uh, a different John who writes about Armageddon. The end of the world as we know it. And so in chapter 1, he t tells us there are seven churches. And in chapter 2, uh, while he's staying on the island of Patmos, he writes a letter to each of the seven churches. Uh, chapter 1 told us the churches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read each letter by itself. Now, some of these are very short, but I think it's important to study each one. Uh, Emphasis was near the island of Patmos, and the island of Patmos was in um, off the coast of Greece, and there was a king called Dominicus, and Dominicus was a, a narcissist, which most kings are, but... Uh, he kind of claimed he was God and built temples and he expected people to worship him as a God. So you could imagine how the early Christians had an issue with this. Um, the Romans were already making all the Christian holidays uh, Roman. Matter of fact, uh, there were, had been cases where they came into the temple and wanted the um, people in the temple who were worshiping Yahweh or God to worship Zeus. And it became popular to be Greek and do Greek things. So in the eyes of a Christian, Greek and Roman things were uh, sons of evil and uh, were against God because you weren't following God's way if you were following the customs of the Romans. So absolutely the uh, church in Ephesus and John, not John the Baptist, um, you know, would not obviously worship a king. That would be contradictory to uh, their Christian instruction. So, the church in Ephesus uh, letter starts in chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Now, I hate to stop halfway through verse 1 to explain something, but these weren't, each of these churches, it's, you know, John says there's an angel. And the angel is really a messenger. Here we have John, who's an elder in the church, very valuable elder in the church, who's been exiled because he won't follow the rules of the king, because he's Christian, to this island that's like seven miles by six miles out of the Mediterranean Sea, and it's formed from volcanoes, so it's just a pile of lava rock and, and you know, not um, a lot of comfort there. I guess being exiled is not supposed to be comfortable. So these messengers have come to talk to John and John sending a letter back with each one of them to all seven churches. So by angel, we the text really means messenger. I'm going to start over. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And by candlesticks we mean uh, candle holders. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy, and thy patience, and how thou cast not canst not bear them in the, the them which are evil so they can't stand the evil people <laughs> and uh, 
And thou hast tried them which say they were apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and hast not fainted. So they haven't become weary. They've stood up to these people. And they gave them a fair chance. Nevertheless, I have some want against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee very quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this his place, except thou repent. Now this makes a reference to Matthew 21, 41. And I'm curious uh, what is in Matthew 21, 41. So I'm going to go ahead and read Matthew 21, 41. So he's praising them for standing against basically the government but he said they're forgetting their first initiative to the real God even though they're standing up for the real God so 21 41 all of these churches are in different circumstances and they said unto him he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will not let them out of his vineyard unto other husbandmen which shall render him the fruits of their seasons. Okay, so it makes a reference to that verse. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of Nick. Olatis, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat the tree of life. Which is the in the midst of paradise of God. And then it says, um, has reference to Matthew 11, 15. You know, it's kind of great that I'm reading Matthew in my new uh, living uh, translation readings. Because I didn't really realize... The amount of references to Matthew, the book of Matthew, in Revelations. 11.18 in Matthew. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. Or a demon as in the footnotes. And then it says, see Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wondrous works? So it's a very lovely letter to the church of Ephesus, and it uh, praises them. Uh, but tells them basically you need to be worshiping God 
um, even though you're refusing to worship this king and you're doing a good job of that. You also need to repent of your sins and stay the course in your Christian path. And um, that's a very good message. We can sometimes as Christian get caught up in what we're doing um, um, that's good, but at the same time, forget to, to do things like pray to God and repent and protect ourselves uh, from the evil in the world. So don't let your guard down just because you're doing this other thing that may be wonderful and necessary and heroic uh, but at the same time you have to it's like somebody telling you you know it's great that what you're doing at work but you have to take care of things at home too uh, kind of thing if you have a, a job outside the house which I don't currently a lot of people don't currently uh, but it's um, you know something I've done and I understand that you can get ra so wrapped up in the work that you're doing that you're really not taking care of yourself your own soul so um, you know your own physical body your, your own needs your family's needs you know those sorts of things so you can do the same thing spiritually you could not take care of yourself spiritually and uh, mind your relationship with God while you're going out and facing and fighting against the evils in the world so soon if you don't take care of yourself spiritually one day when you're fighting things out in the world you're fighting some evil you're trying to do some good in the world eventually you're going to stop and say well, why am I doing this because the reason that you did this to start with was for the love of God to help others come to Christ and then you're not even taking care of yourself so um, I'm kind of talking to myself here in a way because that's happened to me and I've gotten wrapped up in things that I'm doing um, that are beyond uh, my own spiritual growth that are good but how long would it continue if I didn't take care of myself spiritually and pray and ask for forgiveness for my faults. That's, uh, that's the reading for today. We're going to read each of these um, church letters separately that were sent by the messengers that went to see John on the island of Patmos in Greece. Thank you for listening and spending time with me. Please, if you have any comments, make them. A lot of people haven't been making comments. I'll get views and likes and it's like nobody wants to tell me anything <laughs> but uh, I'm grateful that people are listening have a wonderful day God bless you